Tuberculosis is caused by an infection with an organism called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. The bacteria are tough, they divide slowly, and they are resistant to degradation. The commonest route of infection is through the lungs, and that is pulmonary TB. The red rod-shaped organisms are tuberculosis bacilli. The organisms have a thick waxy coat and the stain used to demonstrate them is the zeal nielsen or ZN. Approximately one third of the world's population is infected by TB. 90% of these will remain latent but approximately 10% become active and worldwide approximately one and a half million people a year die of TB. People at particular risk of TB are those living in developing countries such as India, those who are immunosuppressed, for example people suffering from HIV and people receiving steroids, diabetics, alcoholics, intravenous drug abusers and vagrants are also at increased risk of developing TB. In primary TB there may be no or only very mild symptoms but Typical presenting symptoms of TB include cough with bloodstained sputum, fever, night sweats, weight loss and in severe cases there is a really nasty condition called galloping consumption and this is caused by bronchopneumonia with respiratory distress. The problem with TB is that the bacilli have waxy coats making them resistant to destruction by neutrophil polymorphs in the primary infection in the first three weeks. The bacilli proliferate in the alveolar macrophages and airspaces and this may cause a mild bacteremia and mild flu-like symptoms. The severity of TB infection is a balance between the virulence and the number of the bacilli and the ability of the individual to resist the bacilli. Infection may be latent or active, but in the majority of cases infection is latent. After approximately three weeks following first infection, special types of cells are recruited called T helper lymphocytes. They are sensitized and they produce cytokines and they stimulate macrophages to kill bacilli. The macrophages organize into structures called granulomas and we'll see some photographs of granulomas later. This is an example of a type 4 hypersensitivity immune response and this results in tissue destruction. If the bacilli from a previous infection are reactivated or if there is a second infection this causes a rapid response by sensitized T cells. This causes macrophages to be recruited. These form large granulomas with extensive areas of caseous necrosis and this may result in cavities forming. So what do granulomas look like? Well they are composed of macrophages epithelioid cells and Langhans type giant cells. They form tubercles and the characteristic thing about these tubercles is that they undergo a form of cheesy type necrosis called caseous necrosis or caseation. Although granulomas are present in the majority of TB cases, immunocompromised patients may not develop granulomas and this can create problems when trying to make a tissue diagnosis down the microscope when the characteristic granulomas with caseation are not present. The Mycobacterium tuberculosis organisms are demonstrated with a special stain called the zeal nielsen You may see the organisms causing TB referred to as AAFB and this means alcohol acid fast bacilli. So here is a good example of the microscopic appearance of a granuloma. The central part of the granuloma is 
the cheesy caseous area and this is surrounded by epithelioid cells and a special type of giant cell called Langerhans type giant cells. They are different to say foreign body type giant cells because the nuclei are eccentric at one end of the cytoplasm and surrounding the granuloma is a cuff of lymphocytes. Diagnosis of TB may be made through the clinical picture, characteristic findings in radiology, culture microscopy and PCR for the AAFBs, that's acid alcohol fast bacilli or mycobacteria. In case you're wondering, PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction and in a nutshell it is a molecular technique to amplify DNA. A couple of older tests used to diagnose TB are MANTU and HEF. These produce an inflammatory reaction at the injection site, but the problem here is that they may be negative in severe cases of infection such as miliary TB. There are three main patterns of infection. They are primary and secondary tuberculosis and miliary tuberculosis. So what are the characteristics of primary TB? Well, the lung is the usual site of infection. The initial granulomatous infection site is at the periphery of the lung. This is usually walled off by dense calcified collagen, which can be seen on an X-ray. This is called a gone focus. Usually it's about 10 to 20 millimetres in diameter. If there is an infected hilar lymph node draining the gone focus, and this is called a gone complex. Very occasionally there may be systemic spread in primary TB. The well circumscribed whitish lesion at the right side of the picture is a gone focus. It is surrounded by dense calcified collagen and this serves to wall off any remaining viable bacilli. Secondary TB may be caused by reactivation of primary infection or it can be due to new infection. The characteristic finding is a cavitating lesion in the apex of one or both lungs. This is known as the Asman focus. The cavitating lesion at the apex of this lung is an example of secondary TB. Miliary TB may occur in individuals who have reduced resistance to TB. It may follow primary or secondary TB. The organisms are blood-borne and spread throughout the body, producing granulomas that resemble millet seeds, hence the term miliary. There are many sites where miliary TB may be found, including the lungs, kidneys, meninges, bone marrow, liver, spleen, etc. The tiny pale nodules scattered throughout this lung are granulomas in a patient who had miliary TB. And this is the histological appearance of miliary TB in the spleen. The granulomas are the roundish purplish areas. This is an example of miliary TB involving the liver. You can see a granuloma at the centre of the picture. Complications of TB include TB bronchopneumonia, otherwise known as galloping consumption, TB empyema, where there is a purulent exudate in the pleural cavities, pneumothorax, fungal growth into the TB cavities, there may be TB meningitis, and TB can involve extrapulmonary sites such as the fallopian tubes causing TB salpingitis, and it may also involve the epididymis causing TB epididymitis. This is a section of lung taken from a patient who died of TB bronchopneumonia. This specimen has been bisected to reveal the testis and epididymis. The white areas of distended epididymis are due to 
TB. This is a section of brain showing TB meningitis. You can see the brain tissue on the right of the picture. On the left, the slightly darker area is the lymphocytic infiltrate in the subarachnoid space. Finally, bovine TB. This is caused by infection of milk or dairy products by an organism called Mycobacterium bovis. The primary site of infection is in the terminal ileum and cecum. Thanks to TB-free cattle and pasteurisation of milk, bovine TB has largely been eliminated. This is a piece of ileum showing ulceration due to tuberculosis caused by bovine TB. Mm -hmm.